their lives, and so we're glad they're here. And I know they're so elated that you're here. Next is uh, their oldest child, Carol Reeder. She is uh, a precious young lady, and her two children, uh, Jackie and Allison. Allison is in the pink uh, blue dress, and Jackie is in the pink dress, and they're precious, precious people. We're so glad they're here today. Next is uh, my second to the oldest sister, Connie Burton, and her husband, John. And uh, they're long time, all, all their lives, Tulsa residents, and we're glad they're here with us. And their son, uh, John Burton, John Brian Burton. Hello. <laughs> I didn't do that. And Angie Burton, and we're so glad they're here. They have a great family, and we're so glad they're here with us today as well. The youngest sister who is responsible for the majority of today's events, and trust me, we just follow directions well. Uh, and a uh, very small uh, loss of blood this morning. They missed together. And this is Sheila Bennett and her husband Mike, and their children Noah Bennett and Lindsay Bennett. We're so glad they're here today. And I'm David, their youngest, and my wife Sandra. And my children, Amber Mann and Daniel Mann. And so yeah. we're so glad to be here today. At this point, we would, we would be remiss if we did not ask someone to come and lead us in prayer. Faith has always been a great, great part of our lives. And uh, so we're going to do that at this time. And the gentleman we've asked to do this is kind of our family pastor. Uh, he is, we have been staunch Fremble Baptists all of our lives. Our parents have, have, have faithfully taken us to church. And Dr. Curtis Linton is going to come. He's the pastor of the largest Fremont Baptist Church in the world, which is in Tulsa. It runs uh, uh, over uh, over a thousand and three thousand on big days, and he's he's our friend. So we're going to ask him to come and to bless this event and bless the the food that's prepared for us, and then we'll enjoy the day. Amen. Uh, first. Let's pray. Lord, we're so thankful for the opportunity and the privilege of being here in this gathering today. Thank the Lord for Brother and Sister Man and their lives. Fifty years in a day such as we live in that a, a marriage would last through the or the ups, the downs, the ins, the outs, and still after 50 years be intact. And God, what a testimony, what a legacy. God, uh, of your grace and of your mercy toward us and toward this family. God, I pray that you'll bless this time together. Bless the food. Lord, uh, let the... Uh, Brother and sister man understand and see how they're appreciated and that Lord time together does really count. What we do in this life and how we live our lives and, and Lord in front of our children, our grandchildren really does matter. And we see this today. Thank you once again for their life and this family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you don't have a church home, uh, I would be beat later on if I didn't invite you to Cornerstone. <laughs> And we just purchased 60 acres at 76th Street North of Royal Pool in Owasso. And so that's where our pastor resides at. We want to thank you again for taking photos and being with us. But we're here today to celebrate the 50th anniversary of our parents, Marvin and Donald. And we're grateful to God for the home we had and uh, for the heritage that they've graciously given us. And uh, we have been blessed through memories and through fond memories of times and uh, ups and downs as our pastor prayed. Uh, but our parents have been an encouragement to us all of our lives. Every day we've lived, we have known that we were loved and cherished and appreciated and supported in anything that we endeavored to do. And they loved us unconditionally. We never did. A couple of things we spoke about, the girls and myself, as we were putting this together, we never had a doubt that we were loved, that we were cared for, and that someone would be home for us when we finally made it home late at night. They're wonderful Christians, great champions of the faith. So just for a few moments, we want to share just a few thoughts with you, our heart, and then we're going to show a video I think that will touch your heart. And feel free, as the video begins, to move and make yourself comfortable. It's about 30 minutes long. If you don't get to see it, uh, if your view is not quite what you'd like it to be, uh, the video will be replayed throughout the afternoon on the TV and VCR there beside Troy Linda. And so... Uh, please feel free in a few moments to move and to get comfortable and see that. Again, if you can't see it, we will have it available this afternoon. First of all, just a few things about our home. Laughter and joy best describes our home life and food. 
One of my elementary teachers once asked me in class, in front of my class, David, what does your family do for fun? My response was, we sit around, eat, and laugh. <laughs> Laughter sometimes was replaced with weeping when one of us spilled something at the table. And if you know my mother, I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was quick. It was like a cobra snap. <laughs> but sometimes the, the, the laughter was replaced with weeping when that would take place. And it, usually the tool of discipline was a fly swatter. <laughs> you know, I didn't know until I was 14 that a fly swatter was for flooding swines. <laughs> she took me on vacation with her. I, 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 I was in the car with her. But we love mom, and she never did. I have no permanent scars. Outward. Outward. But, uh, you know, we couldn't go to sleep without our whooping. We just... Right? Right, Carol? We couldn't go to sleep. We had video, but we didn't show that. We didn't, we didn't want VHS to haul them out of here on the day. But we couldn't go to sleep without our whooping. But we're so glad that love was expressed. And our dad was affectionate. He would see us coming down the hall, tackle us, throw us on the floor, kiss us, hug us, tickle us, to the point we would cry, <laughs> kick him, and you know, finally he let us up. But we never did doubt that our family, our mom and dad, were not affectionate towards us. Uh, they wanted to be with us. Uh, I never once, once had a babysitter, ever, never one time. If my parents, if the kids couldn't go, they didn't go. And so that's a testimony to their lives, to their character. If there was some place that was not appropriate for them, for us to go, they chose not to go. And I never once had a babysitter. That is, that is a marvel. That is a marvel. They really did want to be with us. And we are their lives. As you'll see in just a few moments, they've invested themselves in us throughout their lives. And we thank you for providing us with that home that we have. Not only our home, but our faith. This is the foundation of our family. And, and just quickly to put it, uh, my sisters and I, we had a drug problem. We were drug at church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, revival meetings, youth rallies, quarterly meetings, annual meetings. If there was a revival within 900 miles, that's basically what we drove every day on vacation. We went. So, so we're so glad. Uh, Dad is a fine minister and still preaches today from church to church, as they call him. Uh, he's a church planner. A lot, a lot of folks don't realize that, but he planted a number of churches, and uh, he's an associational organizer, and uh, he has a successful ministry because of his faithfulness, and also because of my mother, who stood by him and was faithful, 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 traveled the miles, and uh, many days we would leave Tulsa to go to Muscogee, preach, stay all day at some blessed soul's house, like, um, like Joyce over here. Joyce, raise your hand, and uh, stay all day, preach that night, and come back, and, we would beg and plead that, please stop, let us eat somewhere. He'd, he'd just go by. But anyway, we were faithful to his ministry, and it's paid off. It's paid off. Every child, every in-law, every grandchild is saved and has made a profession of faith. Everyone. Myself and my three uh, and my two brother-in-laws are all ordained deacons. They're Southern Baptists. I, I guess that counts, but, 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 but they're ordained deacons. And our and my grandson, Brian, is an ordained minister. Of Southern Baptist, and so we're so grateful, and it has paid off. It has paid off, and we thank you uh, for our spiritual heritage uh, that you've given us. But also our fun, not only not only our home and, and our family life and our faith, but our fun. Every summer, Dad would somehow take the time off to take us on a vacation. Listen, we we didn't fly; we drove. We drove every Canada, Mexico. Why? You know, I mean, uh, not just over the border, but to Acapulco on that. I mean, we drove everywhere, all 48 states. We flew to Hawaii. If there would have been an interstate, we'd have drove. <laughs> that one we flew. Uh, from checking the gas gauge, which I was kind of, I guess, schizophrenic to know as a child. We've been around the gas, we've been around the gas, to reading every road sign. Uh, we made it. Um, Sheila would get sick in the car, and then Connie would get sick because she because Sheila got sick, and then Carol would get a whipping for laughing, 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 laughing at Connie getting sick, and she, it, it was a mess. But we had a great, great time. Uh, we had a we had a lot of memories, and some of those you'll see in just a few moments. One of the most memorable ones was was when we were in St. Louis, Missouri, of course at a baseball game, right, Bob? 
We're at a baseball game, high rise hotel, on fire. The man family, we get in the elevator to ride down. <laughs> it's not a good idea. But anyway, there was a classic line, you'll have to ask mom and dad what that is at some point. But we never have forgot that, that elevator ride down uh, that high rise hotel. And thanks for the vacations. I know they were expensive. I know it was hard on you to take off sometimes and all times. But they were a lot of memories that uh, we really do appreciate. Uh, we even went on the subway in New York City one time. Dad, mom, and I did. And we were leaving Manhattan, going to the Bronx to see a Yankees game. And uh, it was just like the TV, where, you know, there's, you know, the riding on the subway and the, the gang members walking up and down. There was a pool of blood on the subway floor. And Dad says, well, Thelma, you might as well get those tickets out. <laughs> so she starts digging in her purse, and which, if you know my mom, she is always, you know, she either has some cash in her purse or something. And so we're on the subway digging for Yankee tickets. And I'm, you know, I'm just certain I'm never going to see anyone ever again. You know, this is the end of our life. I just knew for sure we would let God take care of us. And for some way that game got off and we went to Yankee game. And it was a great day. But we've had a great experience. We have great vacations. And we thank you for the time that we've had and the fond memories. And the Grand Canyon. It was like this. Did you see it? You know, we drive. No, I, did you see it? That was it. You know, I got to see it for the first time two years ago when it was my family. <laughs> we stopped barely long enough to see it. But uh, we did enjoy the vacation. We saw everything. We don't remember it, but we saw everything. <laughs> Not only are fun, but our offspring. And, you know, I've got some friends of mine, uh, Brother Linton for one, and, who are just now starting to get grandchildren. And, and I realize that the grandchildren get a much higher billing than the children do. You know, I, I understand that. You know, I'm not jealous too much. But, you know, but I understand that. So we're going to take a few moments and introduce their pride and joy. Brian, would you stand up just a second? Let them see you. Nice, handsome man. Brian is Connie's oldest. He is uh, single. He's a graduate of Oklahoma Baptist University with a double bachelor's in psychology and also ministry. He is one semester from completing uh, a double master's degree in theology and music at Southwest Bible Theological Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas. That's a mouthful. But if you can spend all those years, I can, I can certainly pronounce it once. But Brian lives in Euless, Texas and Fort Worth, and he serves staff at First Baptist Euless as a music associate and uh, he produces audiovisual aids for the church on a weekly basis. He produced the video you'll see in just a few moments. He's a recording artist. Uh, his last uh, project, God is Good, is on the Brentwood Benson label. Uh, and, uh, we're proud of him. He's embarrassed. <laughs> but Ryan is a great, great young man and uh, we, we really try to get him to sing. We did. We Connie is so upset that he's not singing on the video, but uh, Brian is very talented, and uh, we're so proud of him, and uh, you'll be able to see some of his work just so late, but we're so proud of Brian. Next, uh, the next in line for his age is Noah Bennett. Noah, would you stand up just a second? Noah is Sheila's oldest, handsome young man, single, not for, uh, my man is here though, she's, she's so nice, sweet. She'd probably give him up. <laughs> Noah is Sheila's oldest. Noah is a very talented young man. Early in life, Noah was blessed with the gift for technology. Uh, Noah, for years, uh, has been involved in Grace Mount Baptist uh, uh, television ministry and working cameras and, 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 and taking care of their sound, making sure that everyone sounds good and uh, has gotten some training and produced events at the Maybe Center and some other things. And currently, uh, he is master control at the local CBS affiliate KOTV. And so anytime you see a program at KOTV, Noah is involved in that. And he's uh, very bright, and uh, they couldn't operate without him down there. At least that's what she was saying. <laughs> but we're, Noah has a surprise for mom and dad at this time. This is a short video. This is a News on 6 special report. 
happy anniversary to Marvin and Thelma Mann. Not just any anniversary, but 50th anniversary. 50 years together. That's special. It takes special people to get along and live together for 50 years. Congratulations. I envy you both very much. Let's see. Born and raised in Oklahoma. Uh, let's see. Married in Jinx. Now living in Broken Arrow. Uh, Marvin, you and I have something in common, building fences. I understand you've built a few fences in your time. And golfing, huh? Something special for you. Again, congratulations. Marvin, Thelma, man, 50 years to get together. I can't even imagine. Angela Burton, would you stand? This is John and Connie's baby. She a doll. She's really John's. I mean, John is no. of her. John, she, Angie has had John's number for years. As we know. Uh, Angie just completed her freshman year at Oklahoma Baptist University, and she's now transferred to the University of Oklahoma at Norman to pursue a degree in graphic design. She's bright and has worked with children throughout her years and at different uh, jobs and uh, occupations. And she is currently employed uh, with First Baptist Broken Arrow in her child development center. And we're proud of her. Isn't she gorgeous? Yeah. Next is Lindsay Bennett. This is Sheila Mike's baby girl. She is so sweet. She is a senior. <laughs> At Broken Arrow High School, she is a tiger. She also loves tigers, lions, and bears. Dogs, cats, snakes, spiders. And she is the family animal lover. She loves animals. She's the kind of person that fence companies love because she drags every kind of animal she can home. And, 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 and she enjoys those creatures. And we're so proud of her and happy for her. And uh, she speaks with her eyes, if you know she's mad right now. She has a, she's very expressive. So I'll be in trouble later. But we're so glad she's here today, and she's precious to our family. And uh, we're so proud of her. Lindsay Bennett. <laughs> Next is uh, Amber Mann, my oldest child, my daughter. She looks just like me. <laughs> we, we share clothes. She wanted to wear my jacket today. <laughs> I told her I didn't think it fit well. Uh, <laughs> Amber is a senior at Cornerstone Christian Academy. She's an honor student, a cheerleader, and so on. And however, her passion is singing. She has a great voice and a heart when she sings. And she is a singer, singer, not just because she's my daughter, but she's very, very talented. And Brian terms it as this way. He says she can wail. That's how that's how that that's how a singer describes someone who can sing. They can they can wail. But she sings weekly to hundreds of people, and then she's a joy to her parents. And uh, I'm trying my best to talk into being the first free will Baptist nun. We're gonna try to do that. But she is very talented and uh, she'll pursue something in music after her uh, High school years are going to work out of our Amber. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Next is Allison Reeder. This is Carol's oldest daughter. She is a beautiful young lady. Looks just like Carol. But just like Carol. She's bright, pretty, personable. She is an angel. She is a junior at Union High School. She's an honor student. And she is the most recent additional driver to the man family. <laughs> She just returned from Texas where her father lives, sporting a new car, and so you may want to be out of the parking lot before she gets behind the wheel of her car. But she's a sweet child. Uh, she is a hostess at Pepper's Grill, and I know why. You know, who wouldn't want to stand up and speak to her while they wait on the table and give their name and phone number to a nice blonde <laughs> lady? Sandra and I were in there a while back, and as soon as the waiters found out that I was her uncle, I mean, they all went, tell us about Allison, give us something good. But, you know, but, you know how can I call? You know? so, she's so sweet, and we're so glad that she is here with us today. She is very active uh, in the youth group at Asbury United Methodist Church, where she attends. And we're so proud of her. Allison Reeder. <laughs> Next is my son, Daniel Mann. Good kid. <laughs> <laughs> Look how the 
him. Daniel is a freshman at Cornerstone Christian Academy. He, Daniel has never met a stranger. You put him in a room with five people and he'll have them laughing and enjoying themselves in just a few moments. He hates to lose at anything, just like his grandpa man. Amen. You know, dad, dad never wanted to lose at bowling, golfing, jacks, you know, whatever. He has passed that gene down to Daniel. And Daniel does not lose very often. His junior high basketball team won the state championship. And two weeks later, as an eighth grader, he helped his high school team win the state basketball championship. So we're proud of him. And he is white. We, we checked that. <laughs> Even though he has great basketball skills, he is, he's our child. But he is a, he's, he's a good boy. He's an honor student. And uh, this summer, this summer, Daniel has made very good friends with a postal digger. He has, he's got close to a postal digger this summer. So, um, and it'll take Sandra and I a good three days to desensitize Daniel from this afternoon with John. Every, every time Daniel spends a few hours with John, it, it takes a couple of days for us to get him back down. But him and John are close. Daniel, we're proud of you, son. And lastly, uh, Jackie Reeder, stand up please. She is Carol's youngest daughter and a joy to our family. Pretty girl. She is a freshman at Union. She's very active in Asbury's uh, youth group. She's an honor student and she is quite a skater. She's quite an ice skater. Now I hear from mom telling me that the Medlock side of the family were all big roller skaters. Is that right, Troy? They were all just, they could spin and twirl and quiz. <laughs> Hey, that passed down to Jackie. You're going to find Jackie. She's on the ice or at Asbury, involved in the youth group or in school activities. And she's bright, personable. And uh, we see Carol through those girls, and they're so special. And their mother is so proud of them. Let's give Jackie a big hand. Thank you. We're just about to be done. I know you're getting bored, but Mom and Dad are really enjoying this. <laughs> One, a couple other things is we want to express our lake memories to you. We, Dad and Mom had a couple of lake cabins throughout their years, and we really had a blast down there from uh, Brian calling water all over and just wanting to live at the lake to uh, Connie had some skiing tricks that she did for us a couple of summers to uh, Brian, did you get it, you know, the, the splinter thing. So we, we, had, we had a number of lake memories that we wish we could share, but due to modesty and some other issues. We could not show those on the video with you today. But we had a great time there. It was an oasis, and we enjoyed getting away from the city and, and, and being there with you. And just one question on the lake memories. Is there a watercraft that Mike Bennett cannot sink? I don't know. I don't, I don't think there's anything available that Mike Bennett cannot sink. You can sink a jet ski, a boat, you on ski, whatever. Sink you. But not only that, late memories, we had a lot of fence memories. Dad worked hard and provided for us all, and uh, we thank you for teaching us all how to work. All of us children, we thank you for teaching us how to work. And, but, but, but I don't think that they ever knew that there was such thing as child labor laws. I don't, I don't, I, I'm, I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. I'm sure a penny a picket was well beneath minimum wage. I'm pretty sure of that. But uh, we appreciate you. More than that. Yeah. <laughs> but we had a great time. We thank you for uh, the life you've given us and providing for us. But also, not only just memories, but golfing. If you know uh, our dad, he loves to golf. That is a passion for him. The first time dad picked up a golf club, he was so mad. I did not think he would get to experience the game of golf. We were at La Fortune Park, and in order for him to rent a set of golf clubs, he couldn't leave a deposit, he couldn't leave money. They wanted to retain his driver's license to ensure he would bring the clubs back. He was so furious. He almost missed out on this great game of golf. But he endured it, and uh, he, he enjoyed it. Well, he didn't enjoy that game because he didn't play very well at first, but he has become an avid golfer and plays very well, and if you want to find him, these days, you find him right around here somewhere. And of course, they live just uh, over on the other course, and um, they're here most all the time. I know some of his golfing buddies are here today. So we thank you for taking care of our dad, uh, Tom, especially as he golfs. You know, there he is, I can miss him. Take good care of him. 
and I know he appreciates your friendship as you golf with him. But uh, you know, you, maybe not the senior tour, but the super senior tour, and maybe you ought to watch out because I'm sure he'd like to be there. And Don, you've played numbers of rounds with him, and I appreciate your friendship with him. But not only golfing was that a, a hobby for our family, but not so much mine, but my mom loves to walk. I'm telling you, she can walk a hole in the wind. I mean, she just walks. She doesn't walk, she jog walks. I mean, she wears you out. She loves to walk, and she invented speed walking. In fact, she's in great shape. She, uh, she's, in, she's in tremendous shape. And as you know, she has so courageously battled diabetes for years, and has been so courageous and so brave, and has done so well and through that multiple injections she takes to uh, just deciding not to eat and just to take care of herself. She has prolonged her life uh, solely for our benefit and, and her grandchildren. She loves us that much to sacrifice for years and we Very courageous. Very courageous. But we like her to slow down just a little bit when we go on walks. It's kind of embarrassing. Mom, would you slow down? <laughs> the Medlocks. Let me speak about the Medlocks just for a second. And we've got some great video of our grandfather and grandmother and her brothers and uh, Marvin, who has uh, gone on. And uh, we miss them all so much. Uh, we enjoyed so much uh, being a part, uh, being half Medlock and enjoying that side of the family. Uh, the Medlocks all could hunt. I mean, they, I, I think that the Medlocks could track and kill anything. <laughs> I mean, if there is a Bigfoot, I got my money on the Medlocks. I've got to, Jimmy, will, Jimmy will snag that thing. Somewhere, he'll snag that thing. I, I was talking to a friend of mine at church, Ron Grace, who's an avid hunter, and he was talking about this guy that he met a few years ago when they meet and go hunting, and, and they just kind of a kindred spirit. And it is, and, and years later, it was Jimmy. <laughs> they made each other some special draw that they went, and, you know. So, and, and our and the Medlocks are such tremendous people, uh, such kind people to our family, and, and has always made us feel at home. And uh, they're kind, hand crushing, hand shaking people. <laughs> uh, they always loved us, and and, and we do miss uh, our, our our grandmother and grandfather, and. Uh, and Uncle Marvin. And the one question I have to ask the Medlocks, is there really such a thing as fly leg gravy? <laughs> Grandpa, you say, don't open up the screen or you let the fly leg out. You let the flies out. Grandma's going to have fly leg gravy. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Fly leg gravy. Had to ask. The man's. The man reunions are really fence conventions. That's, that's basically what it is. Of course, Dad and Bill are the patriarchs, and uh, too many, too many of our family have gone to be with the Lord. So many aunts and uncles, uh, and, and even our generation, uh, like Curtis, and uh, just a few days ago, Billy, who we miss so much. And we have a tremendous bond with the man family, and they've been so kind to us. And, uh, and Bill is here today, and he's special to our family. Spent a lot of time with Bill. And uh, since he and Dad are so close, and 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 all of uh, you that are here today, and uh, uh, Dorothy is here today, and, uh, May is here today, we're so thankful that you're here, and that you have your help, and are able to spend this event with our parents. And thank you for coming today. One question on the man side, and and, and 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 I like an answer before you leave. Did James Mann ever set a post without kicking dirt in the hole? If, if, if there's evidence of James Mann ever setting a post without kicking dirt in the hole, I'd like to know so I could rest at night. But the man's, we have a great, great family. But our spouses, and then we're quickly going to wrap up because I know you're tired and you're hungry. Uh, John Burden is uh, Connie's lifelong love. And uh, you'll see some video of John. John looks so handsome as a young man. I mean, I mean, he did. He looked like, you know, I didn't realize John looked that good. I mean, he looked sharp. I guess years of us has wore off on him. But uh, John is different. John is the only person in our family that is qualified to pick out a restaurant. Basically, that's it. We, we, we recommend where we want to go, and John makes the final decision. He is a food connoisseur. He's a great chef, and uh, very hilti, and... Uh, 
always provided well for his family, and we're thankful for John. And um, we miss Bill. Bill Burton was a special part of our family, and your mother. We love her today. And we thank you for being so kind to her sister. I don't know how she landed you. God is good. Isn't he? And another uh, in-law this year is Mike Bennett. Mike is uh, the family comedian. He adds years to everyone's uh, life that he's around. Mike is a humorous young man and uh, instills that in his family, his children. I remember one time, you know, at Christmas, Mom always cooks a huge feast, a big spread. And we had just gorged ourselves for like two days, tired of turkey, you know, tired of ham, tired of good, can you that tired of good food? Well, we're going to blame on the grandkids. One of the grandkids wanted to order pizza. Now, if you've ever been in between Shakota and Eufaula on a rural area, who is going to deliver pizza on, on like 11.30, December 26th? And it's not going to happen, but we finally found some place open. So we ordered pizza. Of course, it was snowing. And so Mike, we Mike elects to go out and flag down the pizza for us on the highway and come back snow drifted, covered up, <laughs> boxes of pizza, that pizza with him and his classic line was, "Don't worry, I've got it. <laughs> don't, don't worry, I'll take care of it." So Mike has always been good to our family. And we thank you. My, and then lastly, my 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 precious wife Sandra. And oh. Well, before we go to the Bennett's are here. Mike's, Mike's folks are here. Uh, Mr. Jim Bennett, would you raise your hand? And we're so glad you could be here with us and to be with Mike. But lastly, Sandra, my, my bride, my, my precious wife, she is a sweet lady, and uh, I finally found someone that would marry into this family. <laughs> so we've been, we've been married 18 wonderful years, and uh, she is a great lady and loves my parents and loves my sisters and their family, and she is our she is our kind of a um, on-staff pianist for our family because, you know, what would happen is our family always sang, always have sang, and so Sandra has to try to find whatever key Carol starts in. You know, just Carol just starts out and, you know, she, Sandra does a great job <laughs> trying to just take up where we left off. But we're so, uh, I'm so glad that Sandra is here today, and her mother, uh, Mamie Reagan, is here today. Is she over here? Did she go back to wave at Mamie? There you go. And we miss Sandra's father, Don Reagan, who has gone on to be with the Lord. But we thank Mamie for coming today, and we're so proud of Sandra and uh, how she has uh, blessed our family. Thank you. <laughs> lastly, <laughs> lastly, Dad always said a few things, and then we'll watch the video. Dad always said the best way we could pay back our raising is by treating his grandchildren right. He said, he said the best way we could pay back our raising is by raising our children right. We're trying to do that. We really are. And we, we love our children. We have a capacity to love because love has been deposited into our lives. And we've had examples on how to do that by you two fine folks. And so uh, we're going to ask you now to uh, kind of sit back and turn your chairs around, get comfortable, reflect back just a few moments on yesterday, and then after that we have a few more things to present to you. And if you'd like to do that, move around, uh, get something to drink, enjoy some of the food, that'd be fine. And also we have a special end to the video about our faith.